Facility powering up. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, into Division B East of the Nexus Gaming Series. On the left-hand side, you've got slow to start. Oh, wait, no. Slow, uh, slow start. Start slow, then taper off. God, I can never remember their name, and it's going to be like that all the time. Uh, they will be having a Zero Day Blaze, a Dill on Zul'jin, Fenrir to play Brightwing, Xenochrist to play Anubrak, and Arlu will be on that Kael'thas. Over on the right-hand side for Zul'jin Distillery, that's one I definitely know. we got Cowboy Kyle playing Rexar, Misha, of course, to play Misha, Ankle Shot on the Tassadar, Bifrish on the Vala, Led to play Lucio, and Twit, Dwit, Dwit to be playing the Garrosh. Now, I have a little gamble for all of you, and it is that. Will Zul'jin finish out his baseline stacking? Will he finish out the 150 stacks for You Want X? This is a Bone Slicer Zul'jin, by the way. Call them Stew for short. Okay. <laughs> That's easy. Xenochrist will get tossed away. The phase shift from Fenrir will come through. Body check to mitigate 30% of that healing as well. Nicely done from Garrosh there. Vol are going to be going into Creed of the Hunter at level 1. And as always, uh, if you are watching, you, you did play... If you're real big Dill and you know the results, well, you're not too happy about that result right there. But you are welcome to gamble even if you know the results. Just don't spoil it in chat. We're all here to have fun. All right, well, just peeking at the top lane really quickly between Blaze, Rexar, and Misha. Blaze continuing his best just to pressure onto the wave. Maybe get a little splash here and there onto the bear and force some mending out from Cowboy Kyle. But even then, it's it's Rexar, Misha. They're really not mana intensive character. I rarely see. I feel like it's it's a not not very common when I see. Rexar's having to back because, oh, I ran out of mana because I'm spamming so many abilities. Misha's usually tanking down most of the wave. And you also have things like Bird of Prey at level 1, which will clear out your waves faster, get regeneration globes. And we do have Zero Day trying to pressure onto Cowboy Kyle. Does drop the health of this Rexar. Misha's still getting the autos. The charge does come through. Cowboy Kyle wants to, uh, wants to poke here and there with some hatchets, but is unable to do so. Xenochrist still has a hold on this bottom lane objective point. Wit stepping in. Fenrir is going to have a soothing miss to the allies. Body check onto Fenrir as well. Garrosh getting low. He is a pig. As the <laughs> new Brack is able to burrow away. Sorry. Don't know why that was, as, that was funny to me as it was. Cowboy Kyle doing fine right now. The health of uh, Rexar is a little bit low. I'm just going to check really quickly see. Uh, so it's eight seconds on as well. All right. Meanwhile, back in bottom lane, Zul'jin Distillery did grab a camp and are pressuring onto the fort front gate a little bit. Garrosh looks to step in for an enemy, but he goes in for Xenochrist. They, he, oh my god, the living bomb value almost gets a double kill. And Vala will go down. That's a one stack of her creed to fall, or at least 20, or excuse me, 5% off the 25, so... Bonus attack speed has been reduced. Another toss onto the onto the Zul Jin. He's gonna try and get a few more autos out here and there. Big gravity last from Kalefoss. Living bomb not gonna be spread. Indomitable popped, and he's out of there. Back in top lane. Oh, Zero Day is getting whittled down by Cowboy Kyle, and it is gonna be a channel for the time being on the side of slow to start, then taper off, and first blood will be. The Nexus Forces. Very OP. Uh, Dream Shot level 4, by the way, for the Brightwing. Gonna go for the extended range, so we might see Hush a little bit later on. Zul'jin's trying to auto-trade into Vala. And it's uh, it's actually the ally tossed onto the onto the Lucio by accident. A little misplay there, but that's alright. Oh, ankle shot, the living bomb. Mecha Tassadar is offline. Back in top lane, Cowboy Kyle has regained control of the point. A little surprised... Uh, didn't go for the reset, because now going into Zero Day, there is no way the Rexar is going to really be able to step too far out. It's going to be mostly be focusing onto the Misha Micro, and I apologize, Vala to get picked off again in the bottom lane. Zul'jin on 12 stacks currently. I, I can't believe, yeah, Cowboy Kyle's microing this really, really well. Not missing out on any, many, if any, experience in, in the way that they're playing this, but of course can't really step into the, <laughs> t 
Can't step into the uh, into the blaze. I, I just find it so funny that Misha's winning the fight. <laughs> We've been watching a lot of the top lane. My apologies. The solo lane matchup's actually kind of interesting between the two of them. And we will see. Well, we won't see the trade onto Kalefoss for the Lucio. Oh, Vala picking up 40 some stacks. Almost getting to her first 1%. Back in top lane where the action really is. Cowboy Kyle's tapped well. <laughs> right wing defasion face shift in the top lane and Misha, Rexar, they can't play this too aggressive anymore. Oh, no, the men's in place. They, the, the, the bear's fine. I had a friend name his dog Misha and I was like, oh, like, like Rexar's a bear. And he's like, who? <laughs> <laughs> He got the dog, like, during Heroes of the Storm, like, it was, like, when when HGST was still a thing. And I was like, I was like, oh, I didn't know you were a HOTS fan, dude. And he's like, a what? And I was like, oh, maybe World of Warcraft. Maybe, maybe, maybe Hearthstone? I mean, he is from Hearthstone, realistically, right? Oh, well, phase shift down to the bottom lane from Brightwing. She got that peekaboo shielding and little AoE reveal. We're getting ready for our 10 talent tiers. Kael'thas is going to step on the point for a few seconds. Gravity Labs connects on the two. And Ubrek burrows in. And the armor from Garrosh is enough to keep him alive. Led with some heals coming through as well. Blaze gets a kill on Demisha in the top lane. And Cowboy Kyle is forced back to play right by his fort. And can't blame him on that. Back though down to the bottom lane. Zul'jin's feeling some pain from the Tickle Me Tassadar. And with no Toss Dingo, that Zul'jin will fall. 5-5 five five in kill so far. As the damage healing experience is popping up at the bottom of your screen, Garrosh looking for something with his Groundbreaker. And Lucio led with a sound wave to cancel out the phase shift. Put it on 10 seconds. Misha back into the top lane. Adrenaline stim pack activated. Zero Day doesn't get a kill onto the bear. And it's still his experience. Well, tiny kill right there. Speaking of kills, we have Kael'thas falling in the bottom lane. He wouldn't have died there if he had Convection. I'm pretty sure of it. I'm, I'm about, I'm about 2% sure. Oh, Archon for Tassadar, Warlord's Challenge, High Five Lucio, Reign of Vengeance, Vala, and Boars to be unleashed by Rexars. Lucio has jumped up here into the top lane. Boars immediately unleashed. The phase shift from Brightwing into Zero Day as well. Not a whole lot of mana on these two soul laners as they really haven't backed off for a while. Misha is still trying to pressure in. That's an Emerald win Brightwing, by the way. And we still haven't had a... A Zerg way for either of these teams. It still has been the first charge. Lucio with just about no mana. Polymorphed as well. Misha holding onto the point. Bottom lane goes back over to the side of slow to start. Slow start. We'll just go with that. Slow start. It has been a pretty rapid start for both these teams, I have to say. Things are happening on the screen in front of us. Reign of Vengeance from Vala. Tostingo forced by Zul'jin. He's going to try and get a traded kill. And he will be able to do that with the Kael'thas Phoenix. A Reign of Vengeance almost grabs Zeno. And the Vala can't vault forward. The Beatles will come out and those will tank some of the damage. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Rexar will lose Misha to the Banelings. You gotta be careful of those Banelings. They are the best unit in all of StarCraft II. Until that patch comes through. Until until the, the StarCraft II patch, Banelings are the best unit in StarCraft II. That's why I won so many games with my Banelings yesterday. My Banelings that look like Hydras and Ultralisks and, and Roaches. <laughs> I don't, I may, I think I actually lost my only game that I actually play, played Banes in. Oh, the top lane fort has fallen down in the bottom. The garage will go down and the siege does continue. This might be a double fort soon. Anubarak does have some beetles to spawn. Yes, he is. Uh, he does have the Legion at level one. He's also got the Legion Scarabs. So these beetles are. I believe the ble beetles uh, then supply a little bit of HP to him, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Uh. Whoa, Elf. Thank you for the for the raid. Uh, we're in our first best of three of the day. Welcome in, Raiders. I hope you had a good stream, my friend. Thank you very much for thinking of us. Uh, if you're new to the stream, welcome in. My name's Bahamut. We do a lot of Heroes of Storm casting commentary, all that good stuff. And today we're checking out some NGS games. Much appreciated. Thank you again. Hope your hero stream was good. 
Camps to be traded between bottom and top from both sides. Oh, and if you want to know the average MMR for the different divisions, exclamation NGS MMR. There's a safe link for work, which is just an image of the different divisions and the average MMR for the teams within each division. So, if you are new to Nexus Gaming Series, that is a... Uh, there's the little tidbit for you. Well, Xeno's sitting in the bush. And Garrosh is going to anchor. Well, he's going to stay. He's going to step near it, get turned, get polymorph immediately. A big gravity lapse from Kalefoss, and he will be tossed away. Number one win from Brightwing coming through. Zul'jin gets the kill onto Garrosh. The boar is unleashed by Rexar. Misha shall fall here as well. The top lane camp is going to pressure onto the keep front gate, and it seems like the members of Slow Start are going to continue to do so as well. I appreciate it. I appreciate the raid again. Big jet propulsion from Zero Day sets up a kill into Rexar. The Emerald wins from Brightwing. Did I did I hear those? No, that was not. Okay. I thought I heard Emerald Winds go up, but I was like, no, no, no. That's, that cooldown does not match the timing. Either way, and not a member of the side of uh, Slow Start will fall here. Beacons will activate. They should be able to get the reset. Vala vaults forward. This is very, very aggressive. If they had, if they had decided to turn, they would get a kill, and that's exactly what happened. <laughs> Twitch tries to throw a minion. Tazdingo's activated, and I do think this is Garage to fall. Gotta get out of that oil slick, though. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Backwards. God dang it. <laughs> I was looking at the oil slick. I was like, Zul'jin, please. And I was like, wait, no, Blaze is on his team. No, it's all fine. And with Blaze on his team, they do find a kill. God, I'm all over the place. Phoenix activated by the Kalefoss. We have the Zerg wave building once again for slow start. Misha getting high-fived by Lucio. The Twin Flames don't take down her, but this is Lucio inside of a cocoon, and I do think with a gravity lapse, Misha falls as well as the Lucio. The Zerg wave is looking heavily favoring, heavily, heavily good. That's going to be a heavy Zerg wave into bottom lane. Um... I do believe the Archangel should go into bottom lane as well as there's more defenses in said lane. So this will be a humongous push to the side of Slow Start. What's up, Clock? Good to see you, bud. No, for some reason it's going into top lane. Don't know why. The Archangel typically goes to the more well-defended lane. Don't know why it, it went to top, but okay. I asked a Blizz developer about this one time, and he just goes, I don't know. <laughs> I asked a dev about this, and he's just like, oh, I don't know why it does that. I mean, it's like saying the game is spaghetti code without saying the game is spaghetti code. <laughs> well, we have our Ultralists, our Guardians, all that good stuff coming through. Garrosh tries to pressure on real Big Dill, but it doesn't work out. And that is 30 stacks for Zul Jin, the believers to be paid out at the end of the game. Boss Archangel still working his way through top. Did clear out the entire Zerg wave that was inside top lane coming out for Zul'jin Distillery. Uh, how healthy is it? Wow, that Archangel is still very healthy. Uh, that should guarantee the keep with everyone still down in this bottom lane and a wave up there as well. And, oh, Vala might... No, she's fine. I thought a new break would be able to burrow it and land a combo, but it's going to be just shy right there. Lead taking a real big deal chasing down once once the kill. Does have the toss dingo. Gonna pop that immediately. Gets the kill to Lucio who tried to step in. A cocoon onto Garage. The top lane keep goes down. Don't know why we're getting a little framey here. I apologize. And this is going to be looking like a push to end. Yeah, this is a push to end. Okay. A Phoenix that does something will take down the Tassadar. We will have more, more, more pressure from Misha applied, but it doesn't work out. Fenrir, the boar, does the boar get the kill into Fenrir? No, it's going to be uh, still 153 HP left on that bright wing. Cowboy Kyle will not fall. Yes, he will. That is going to be a team kill. And the members of a slow start. Well, go ahead and not taper off. GG well played. They'll take map number one. Uh, is, like, everything broken today? Yes.
I updated my graphics drivers before stream. Everything breaks. I didn't even have OBS open. Uh, sorry, my stream elements alerts are just not working. So let's see how we can get these to work. I mean, it worked actually earlier, but now it decided not to. Uh, let's see if we just completely reset this whole thing. Reset session. Session reset failed. Not surprising. Does this work? Nothing works. Okay. Um. Let's see if this is gonna work out for us. I blame Elon Musk. Can I do that? Can I just blame him? There we go. Works off the website. Welcome. There we go. Gosh, that took forever. <laughs> can I just can I just blame him? Like, can I am I can I do that? <laughs> I agree. I absolutely agree. Oh, it is. Why does it look like it's stormy outside? It is beautifully blue. I guess we're getting a storm. But yeah. Would you like to know not what to do? Just do the opposite. <laughs> the raid gif is awesome. Thank you, thank you. It's uh, Mortal Kombat. Um, speaking of wonderful, amazing 1990s movies about video games that were perfectly done with no issues, we're going to be watching Street Fighter this Friday in Discord. Uh, we'll be starting at 3 o'clock PDT, uh, so that's 6 o'clock EDT and midnight CEST. I, do, I know it is a bit late for our European viewers and friends, but if you want to come by and watch Street Fighter, it'll be in the Discord. If you'd like to join the Discord, uh, exclamation Discord. <laughs> exactly, Harkin. <laughs> Can't pay my bills? Blame, just blame him. <laughs> Twitch viewership has gone down. Just blame Elon Musk. <laughs> Am I picking up the new Mortal Kombat? Uh, uh, not not right now. Uh, if I were, I would probably play it off stream. I don't know if people really want to watch me play it. I one really need to save for a PS5 so that way I can play the Final Fantasy Remake Part Two that comes out in February. I also need to set money aside for probably Lies of P at some point, so that's 60 bucks. Um, so, yeah, like my, my, my game budget's very low right now. Um, you know, maybe maybe that's what I that's that's what I should ask for, for for my birthday. Is I should ask for um for for my for Christmas I ask I always ask for my season pass to, for the for the mountain because it's 400 it's $500. It's 449 it's 499 US dollar. Um but I just always ask for that. I'm just like, I just give me my season pass, and that's Christmas. And my parents, when they were visiting, they were like, you have to think about your birthday, too. And I'm like, shit, I guess I do. Like, I was like, you guys bought me a season pass. That's good enough. But they were like, you have to think about your birthday. And I was like, I could maybe ask. Man, asking for a PS5 feels like so much. I think I'm just going to ask for a bunch of books. <laughs> Get Game Pass for a month, Liza P on, on PC. It, oh, Liza P is on, on Game Pass. I wonder if I actually have... Because Discord Nitro gives you a couple months free of Game Pass, so maybe I could do that and save myself the 60 bucks. My wife and I uh, are some of you YouTube viewers. Oh, for Crush. Hey, Crush. Sorry, I missed your initial message about the... Am I going to partake in Mortal Kombat 1? Probably not on stream. Probably not on stream. Sorry, I missed your initial question. I was all over the place. Um, books are best. Yeah, I'm almost done. So I've been reading the the Southern Reach trilogy, the Area X trilogy or whatever uh, by Jeff Vandermeer. I'm almost done with book two, Authority. I, I got to like the last section uh, last night before I went to the bar to try and meet up with people. And um, 
it was like it was getting to like the culmination of everything and i was like i was like you know i'm gonna save this for tomorrow night so i'm gonna finish that tonight and then i'm gonna do some laundry and do some stuff around the house and uh probably start the oh i have to look at D, &D stuff but that that takes like 30 minutes mostly and then maybe i'll start the third book tonight we'll see Mr. Cap! Cap, thank you for the $11. I very much appreciate that. Thank you. Dude, I'm so annoyed. I swear to God. Oh, I never paid at the last bet. Sorry, my, my ADHD is bad today. Uh, yes, Suljin did finish. I remember noting that. Um... I, I swore that I read when they announced the Resident Evil Separate Ways DLC, they were like, yeah, it's gonna be free. It's gonna be part of the game. I, I swear I read that in some dumb news article, and I guess that's that's on me for reading like a, a news article after a state PlayStation state of play. But I swear everyone was talking about how the, it was gonna be free DLC. Because the comment that followed by everyone was like, yeah, man, the Resident Evil Village DLC was trash. And it was, I'm sorry. Like, jeez, man. I didn't I don't I don't play Resident Evil to play super powered teenage girl. Sorry. That's a different series. Anyways, my ramble aside, let's get into another game, everybody. There's a Nazebo. Let's do some Nazebo stacking. Does Naz uh get stacks? Uh yes, 175 or more. Uh, no, 174 or less. Alrighty, doesn't matter if he takes the level 20, we're just looking at the stackage at the end of the game, okay? Uh, because at level 20 there is a talent you can take to remove your stackage. Let's get into this. Welcome back everyone, sorry for the delay. I got a little off topic and I feel like that'll be the motif throughout today as well. On the left hand side we have slow start, then taper off. I got it perfectly this time without having to look it up. We got an Arlu on Stukov, Xeno to play Varian, we have a Fenrir Nazibo. We'll have a real big Dill on Sylvanas, and last but not least, zero day attack on Hogger. The battle begins in To the right hand side, Zuljin Distillery, looking to take us to a map number three in our first best three of the day. Five, Led on Brightwing, four, Cowboy Cow to play Leoric, three, Ankle Shot on the Falstad, Dwit on one. Stitches, and Bifrish! Five, we'll play a Tychus. Now, of course, the big question is how many stackings will Nazibo had? have at the end of the game. Uh, Voodoo Ritual is uncapped. He gets stacks from killing minions that have, uh, well, minions that die with poison on them. You also have a talent. The Blood Ritual talent can get you a few stacks as well for kills. And that'll be first blood immediately over to the side of Slow Start. A promising kickoff here on map number two in our first best three of the day. Hey, we got immediate odds. Thank you, chat, for participating in the Twitch Gambles. Stacking on Naz is totally Squaresville. We build zombies and guard the wall down. So you play Siege Isbo? Man, that was horrible. That was horrible. <laughs> that was absolutely awful. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we get into Leoric in top lane, a Tychus mid. The rest of the crew in bottom lane for Zul'jin Distillery is a hook. We'll connect onto Fenrir, who is a crab, and the tower shot's coming through. The Nexus Force is OPOP. -OP. Nah, Siege Bow. <laughs> my attempt wasn't even valiant by comparison. Oh, man. All right, well, <laughs> Dwight is going to be poked at by the Varian. And Dwight actually gets a little chomp before uh, making his way back down into the bottom lane. Dill is not going to be hooked in. Savannah, she's fine for the time being. 20-some stacks already for Falstad. We're a minute and 51 seconds in. Not too bad for Ankle Shot on that hammering Gathering Storm level 1. Taunt Varian. And he's going to be immediately hooked. Polymorph, Tower Shots, chunk a little bit. Varian actually looking for a quick charge. Savannah does have her Might of the uh, Mercenary No, Might of the, No, Mercenary Queen. God. Might of the Banshee Queen is, is the level one, and I always flip the two because that sounds like a good mercenary queen talent name. Anyways, 
Uh, sappers will get amplified damage as they rush on in, and that'll be the entire fort front gate going down in bottom lane. First objective phase, our triple alters always top left and right, and then we have the center. That's the RNG location for this one. Could be in the bottom. And after that, we start getting to the, the randomness around the map, whether it's double, single, and the locations as well. Alright. Right wing to check a bush with it. Oh, that's a blind hook into the bush. Arlu's gonna be found. And with the barrel roll in, Ankle Shot wants to find this kill. Unfortunately, they're not able to do so. Zeno comes into the back line, slowing some of that damage down. Might have been a taunt to actually do that. Oh, wait, Haunting Wave in from Real Big Deal, but they wanted to go for the Bright Wing. Couldn't get it. Hogger Lee Orc will trade out the solo lane locations, the top left and right. We get down into the 5v5 over the center point. Bright Wing's going to hearth out completely. She should have a phase shift onto somebody. I'm going to assume it's onto that Tychus. Oh, nope, she's already back into it. I missed the target. Savannah's is going to be picked, and missing the target is not what Dwight's going to be doing with these hooks. A nice double kill for the side of Zuljin Distillery as Nazebo throws in a few more toads that delay out. 25 stacks on the Pandemic, level 1. And the Raven Lord will take 8 points of core damage. The Gravekeeper on the right-hand side will take only 4. And the Raven Lord will lose another member right there. This is 4 kills early on to the side of Zuljin Distillery. Zombie wall catches the entire wave. Nicely done. Zeno comes in. Gets the immediate taunt onto Tychus. The soothing mist to allow him to back away. And Tychus will not be felled. Next objective is going to be a singular objective. In the center of the map, we'll have camps to be traded. I don't think we'll see the invade. Uh, as a reminder, because Cav was so generous and came through... Tomorrow we're going to be doing the uh, Resident Evil 4 Separate Ways DLC. And we're going to be checking that out. I actually don't think I ever played it on the original, like the original release of it. So I have no, I don't know anything about it to be honest. Besides, it's Ada Wong. Well, Dewitt's going to be locked in by some trash, and the body blocking from Fenrir is pretty good. A triple kill to be achieved. Traded for the Stukov. Slow to slow to start. Well, seems like they are living up to their name on this one. That maniacal laugh you hear in the background is the Grave or the Headless Horseman. He has spawned as it's five minutes into the game, and will be up and available for four shots into the enemy core. Sappers will get amplified by Savannah's Mercenary Queen. You can see that glow around them. All three of them should get the charge in fairly soon. Black Arrow's activated to push up this way faster. One, two, three, make it in. You can see that damage was quite significant for just the three sappers. You do have a little bit of poke onto the tower as well from the Black Arrows and the allies around, but still, those sappers with the Mercenary Queen got so much value. If that's a level 13 hook, that definitely hits with the extended range, unfortunately. Well, it's not level 13. Level 10 is around the corner for both sides. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what those numbers look like. 130 stacks to go. Non-champion keeping the count. But the Pandemic Toads are fighting some great splash damage or damage over time into the back line. Those Xenochrist and friends are stuck inside this entomb. Augur gets a bounce through. Staggering blow to bop him back. DeWitt getting low. The Tyke is getting chased by a few of those corpse spiders, but it doesn't look like he's going to be a corpse. It is a gorge on to Sylvanas. He's going to... Uh, uh, stitches is taunted. He actually goes down. Dill will be traded. Oh, it's all over the place. And parody has been found. As four shots will rain into the core of Zuljin Distillery. 10 to 10, 32 to 32, and 2 to 2 in kills in this moment. The only difference right now is that, is that kill difference. As Varian goes in for a charge onto Ankle Shot, the barrel roll doesn't get away fast enough. The Ravenous Spirit, the big slappy ghost, and Ankle Shot will get the face shift from Lead. This is an Annihilating Spirit level 20, so no cooldown or no uh, healing reduction. Some toads, some spiders, and that'll be bottom lane fort to fall. Polymorph, Varian is a squirrel. He does have his shield wall level 10. Tyke is trying to chase him with some overkill. Another shield wall activated. Draken laser drill, by the way, for the Tychus. Draken laser drill to try and siege down these stars. Also provides some good zoning potential around objective phasings. Uh, otherwise, the big thing to note is Nazebo has 69 stacks on his Pandemic. 
The only nice kind of pandemic out there. Baseline stackage, if you are just listening and you bet maybe, it's 62. False stat was 71 stacks on Gathering Storm, seven and a half minutes in. Not too bad. Single altar again. It's gonna be in the bottom most portion of the map. I'm gonna see. Yeah, they did get the bell tower back in control. Slow start. I feel like they actually should have waited a little bit. They should have waited closer to the objective facing, because you saw that Nazebo had to throw some spiders, and that was pretty much it. I feel like they could have waited closer to the objective, thrown the spiders, get the conversion of the bell tower, and then it would have been they would have had the they would have had the five shot potential. Though of course you would have potentially stepped into all that and then that could have happened as well, so. You know, hindsight's 2020, but either way, I mean that's that's what I'd be thinking. Wailing her out from Sylvanas, that's a nice staggering blow from Hogger, and they take down the Brightwing. Dragon Laser Drill is shredding through real big deal who wants to try and trade, but yeah, that, that Dragon Laser Drill is just a little too powerful. And that will get cleared out. Stuke off to fall. Tychus will get picked off by Sylvana. She gets a bit of revenge from all that damage from the Dragon Laser Drill. And now the chase down continues. Cowboy Kyle activating. Or no, no, it's not activating. He gets the movement speed from the drain momentum. That's what it is. I was like, I was like, he has a talent that gets the augment on his, on his movement speed. Oh, zero day slowed, and I think that should be enough to confirm a kill. Bit of a back and forth around this bottom lane fight. And now, led with the four shots, Zuljin Distillery to lead. A slow start, then taper off, will be down to 28 core HP. Zebo Pandemic is done. 62 stacks on his baseline. He'll be back in three. To hopefully get more stackage for the Believers. Oh wow, we have a lot of odds on this. Where did that happen? Sorry, whoopsies. All right. Savannah's does go down in the mid lane. A pick off from Leoric, the flailing swipe. Zeno goes in still, the lurking arm underneath all of this. Volstead trying to poke out here and there with some hammerings as they back off. A gorge, nice gust to push back the enemy team. Fenrir just got back. Fenrir just respawned. Oh, well, for the believers, he got four. They, they got four stacks. Gorge Gust is doing great. Gorge Gust is doing great. That is a very, that is a very correct statement. Uh oh. No, there's no Gorge available, but the slam, the jam, huge wailing arrow, and Falstead's the one to go down. Dill stays alive. Okay. What's up, Hunter Lust? How you doing today, bud? <laughs> Gorgeous gusts. Oh, I get it. I get it. What's up, Hunter Orc? You're on lunch. Well, I hope you're having a good lunch, bud. What's on the menu? What am I going to even have? I don't even know what I'm going to have for dinner. Oh, I don't, let alone, I mean, I'm not going to have lunch, but... Hmm. Maybe ramen tonight. Last night I had grilled cheese. Again. Lurking arm. Nice hook from Stitches. Zeno's trying to back away. The taunt onto the Tychus. They will trade out into... Oh, it's a huge ravenous spirit. The ghost... Or excuse me, the gust does come out and interrupt it. But man, those last hits, last hits were enough. A variant of fall. And it's a quadra kill for the side of slow start. Then taper off. <laughs> Oh man, do they go for boss here in this moment? Of course not. Hard siege the top lane. We got a Sapper in bottom. That'll probably get cleared up by the minion wave or bright wing. Either way. Uh, Leo's gotta be a little careful here. He doesn't want to respawn next to the enemy. And be able to get into the death zone. But the top lane bell tower will go over to the side of slow start. Then taper off. Alright. I was about to say, they're not gonna do it now. 79 stacks for the Nazebo. Less than 100 to go, believers! Heroes, I have opened a tunnel near our core that leads and we are 12 or so minutes into the map, so we have the upgrades onto the work? towers and the teleportation what? open as well. My apologies, sorry. 
glanced at Twitch chat and I was reading something. Or excuse me, I was, I was sipping on some water. Right wing will go down in bottom lane. Man, we are missing kills left and right today. My apologies. <laughs> Top bell tower regained by Zul'jin Distillery, but lost one in bottom. Triple altar phase coming up next. Potential of 15 shots into the core of Zul'jin Distillery if things go awful. <laughs> a, a good couple kills in mid lane, and absolutely. So I was looking at what Crush was saying, you know, now's the time to AFK soak Nazebo. Oh, level and some change to go for, for the for the 20 upgrade if they want. They could go Annihilating Spirit still. That's a Horde in from Hogger. Fenrir will fall. Didn't go for Ice Block at 16. Face shift onto, onto the stitches as there was a gorge into Sylvanas. Polymorph as well. Sylvanas is turned into a pig. Someone will get the last auto. Zero day. Gets the chase down onto Hogger. The staggering blow finds the kill. It's two for two as the objective phase is still up. And Hogger, Brightwing, rush down towards bottom lane. Varian looking for a potential play into Cowboy Kyle. And oh, whoa, that's a good lurking arm. Something, 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 low blow. Okay, three shots into the Raven Lord core, five into the Gravekeeper. And we could see five more. Zero Day, I think, does get this channel. So it is going to be a total of ten shots into the core of Zul'jin Distillery. And somehow, some way, Arlu does not get hooked there. Nazebo has respawned. Believers rejoice. 80-some to go. Oh, the hook on Zeno immediately into the death zone. And the gust flank into the... Oh, my God. Wow, they actually only get one kill. My brain was like, oh, it's going to be a double kill, a triple kill with Hogger going in. Nope. They get a singular kill into Stukov. Fenrir getting run at right now. No control acti by, activated by Hogger. He's getting some great damage splashing around. Unfortunately, Hogger is dead now. Ravenous Spirit. Nazebo did not take a level 20 yet, and the big slappy ghost will get a kill. To be honest, I'd like to see Fenrir go Annihilating Spirit at level 20. Not that I care about the stackage, it's just I feel like Annihilating Spirit will be really, really good in these team fights. And yes, because it also does have the healing reduction by 50%. Oh, you love to see it. Big slappy ghost just got slappier. 98 stacks for this false dead on his Gathering Storm. 99 on the Voodoo Ritual for Nazebo. 76 to go for the Believers. Oh, Stark, I love it. It's so good. Like, I, I absolutely agree. Entomb with the Buried Alive applied onto Fenrir, who's just trying to back out of the range. Unfortunately, hey, you know what? Nexus forces help out. But this is, an, this is, this is going to be a rough moment to the side of slow start. Zul'jin is still going to clear out this bottom lane bell tower. Sylvanas... Mercenary Queen gets a ton of value. Black Arrows, they're going to try and take this down. Stukov, Arlu with the channel. Does he get it uninterrupted? Yes, he will. Falstead flies to top, but it's not going to be quick enough. To be honest, I would have liked to see Falstead fly on top of Stukov's head, but that doesn't happen. We'll see a trade onto shots. Three for four, if I'm not mistaken. Because this spell tower didn't get converted in time for Stukov's channel. But hey, 18 to 14, the members of Slow Start are still holding on in map number two in our first best three. It's 19 to 20 in kills. Uh, exactly, Stark. I, I just made the Stark. I just made the same realization. I'm like, holy heck, we're almost 40 kills at 16 and a half minutes. Almost 40 kills at almost 16 and a half minutes. 102 stacks for Nazebo. Zero day gonna get hooked. The gorge is in play as well. Hortipult's available. Can he utilize it to get out? Polymorph, the easy window. Pff, unfortunately not. The damage is just a little too much. And uh, the hogger will fall. By the way, uh, Tychus has over... Oh, wait, hold on. Ads are going to try and play. Let's get rid of those. No thank you, Ads. Um, so baseline for the Tychus minigun duration is 3 seconds. This adds point zero three seconds, so 100 stacks would be 3 seconds. So he's at he's over 6 seconds of, of duration of minigun. Just, just want to point that out for all of you. He's, he's over six seconds. It's like six point something seconds. 
So he's doubled his effective time. A hook on to real big deal. Doesn't get the anticipated uh, move out of the mid lane wave. Zebo gonna try and clear out these sappers really quickly. But look at the setup already under the left hand side. Augur dead for 15. What do the members of Slow Start want to do here? A hook onto real big dill. Oh! The members of uh, Slow Start, they, they're going to have to give this away. That Stepping into this is a horrible idea. They get the point blank gorge onto Zeno. Stuke up with a lurking arm to zone back, but it's not going to zone back enough. Zeno should be falling here. Dwit with some good body blocking and Entomb from Lyurk on the top of our screen will pull in or will hold Stuke off in place. A flailing swipe. Pushing away all max, max range hook onto Hogger. And by the way, we are hungry, hungry stitches. Wind Tunnel Falstead, and they get the Cowboy Kyle channel. Nicely done with the Wind Tunnel, to be honest. I, I really like that call. And this is going to be a boss start. They're looking at a boss start. I mean, it's a Savannah's dead for 20, Varian for 40. Fenrir going to be hooked in. Oh, no. There's no ice block or anything. Throw down some, some spiders and... Oh, that's the end of that. A quadra kill for Zul'jin Distillery and a massive round. 12 shots in total will rain into the core of the Raven Lord down to 6 HP. What was looking a, like a decent game and maybe a 2-0 series for slow start is starting to slip away. 65 stacks for Nazebo to go, chat. <laughs> Do it, looking for the hook, can't find it onto anyone behind the fort, but the mid lane bell tower will go down. Has destroyed a fort. All right, 20 on the Nazebo for his death timer. Hogger right around that same time, second or two off. This game is a bloodbath. What's up, Kaimo? Good to see you, bud. Happy Thursday to you. I'm really excited about tomorrow. Tomorrow we're, we're playing Resident Evil. Resident Evil, ooh, 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 beautiful in tomb onto Sylvanas. Dill will be falling here. Falstead Barrel rolls in. The wind tunnel's available. Gets Zeno pushed up against the wall, but it's not enough to lock them in place. Another bell tower converted to the side of Zul'jin Distillery. If they get a single altar channel, they'll be taking this game. And I don't know if they can get the con they, they can get the trade on this bell tower quick enough. Do they have? The damage in 18 seconds, uh, it's okay-ish. A hook onto Hogger is gonna be good. Portapult forced out as well. Zebo damage is looking promising in this moment. Draken laser drill, no focusing diodes, but those Draken laser drill to zone back. Falstead's still in the bottom lane. He's gonna get the channel, and this will be the end of map number one. Even, yeah. No, they don't get the belt. Ah, uh, Fenrir can't get it in time. The shots are fired before the conversion happens. And ladies and gentlemen, Murloc mains and Cho'Gall champions, we're going to a map number three. GG, well played. Nineteen to twenty-seven in our kills. Finally finished my water. I can actually start my tea. All right, well, Nazebo believers, I am sorry. It is 174 or less. Let's quickly get rid of some ads here. And while those ads play, we'll get set up for map number three, and we'll talk about random things. Like how uh, the splash screen of Heroes of Storm now just always says Sylvanas. I don't know why chat. I don't know why, but it always says Sylvanas. And before someone's like, well, it's because you have Sylvanas selected for quick match. No, I have De Decker Kane set for quick match. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. We did get a patch recently. So, uh, we'll just blame them. Sob, your precious bandit box. No, 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 don't sob. Don't, don't be sad because they're gone. Be happy that someone else has them. <laughs> <laughs> the file for the Savannah's home screen is probably moved or deleted. It's a spoiler for the next major event. Yo, we're getting we're getting the Banshee Queen. 
They're adding Banshee Queen into Heroes of the Storm, everybody. Let's go. I mean, that makes sense, Crush, but I, I, yeah, you're probably right. How's your day, Lard? Happy uh, Thursday. Oh boy, I, I seriously, I can't wait for tomorrow's stream. Like, I'm, 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 I'm excited for today's stream and all that good stuff. I can't wait for tomorrow's stream. Like, Resident Evil. Oh. Like, four was pretty good. Four was pretty good. They did a really good job with it. If I think, if I honestly think back to like playing through it and everything, it was very enjoyable. It was very enjoyable. Especially because of all the nutting we had during it. <laughs> I, I was... <laughs> I was trying to figure out what you were doing with worms. <laughs> and no fungus babies. Well, I mean, I liked I liked Village quite a bit. I I liked Village quite a bit. Uh, Village falls a uh, Village falls off really hard after uh, what's his name? After the big blobfish, the, the like the the super tanky boss. What is his name? Like, uh, the Heisenberg area is a hard shift. Not a big fan of the Heisenberg area. The Chris section just feels forced. Like it's like, oh, we gotta put Chris Redfield and have an action sequence. Re -hoo! Like, I don't know. Yeah. Otherwise, you're sitting around uh, doing nothing. How's uh, Armor Core Six for you? How's uh, Armor Core Six treating you? Sorry, for anyone wondering, we're waiting for ads to finish out before we get into our next game, so that way play, uh, viewers don't miss any of the action. So, uh, some people have ad blockers and stuff like that, but we just we just try and run our ads between games so that everyone gets to enjoy the fun. I guess like I could sit here and be like, sub to me so you don't miss action, but, meh. Armor, six is, Armor, six, Armor Core 6 is great, you're loving it. Uh, my buddy is a bartender at... Um, one of the bars that I go to, and uh, that was where I was supposed to meet up with people last night. So I was, I ended up just chatting with him a bunch about video games, because I got there and it was like this dead time. Like there was like me and like two other people in the entire bar. So him and I just started talking about video games while he was like doing like prep and everything for the upcoming probably wave that he anticipated. Because when I left at eight, like I got there at six-ish, I left at eight. Um, When I was leaving, the bar was starting to get packed again. But we, him and I were talking about Armor Core 6, and uh, he, he was like, last night was his last night of work, because he works two jobs. Uh, his last night of work in both jobs for like 18 days. And I was like, so what are you going to do? He's like, dude, I'm just going to sit around and play video games. I'm like, hell yes. So he was telling me he's going to finish up Remnant, Remnant 2. He's got he's to gotta do Armor Core. He's like, dip, he's like really deep into like Starfield and stuff like that. So huh. there's some decent games that have come out lately. Can't wait to play more of it when you whenever you have free time. Yeah, that's the that's the big thing is finding the time to for these things. I say that and my job is to play video games, but still, like <laughs> for me, like I, I finish stream and I have like zero desire to ever play games off stream. I honestly I, I rarely play games off stream because when I finish stream, I usually just wanna like sit and just like just chill. Also my brain goes like, well if you're if you're playing a game, you could be monetizing it. It's like, nah, we don't have to monetize everything. Speaking of monet, no, I'm just kidding. We'll talk about that later. Let's get into another game. Oh, uh, actually, what kind of gamble do we want? Um, oh, there's a Kalethos. I assume it will be Regen Globes. Please be Mana Addict. Oh, I mean Convection. Well, I was wrong. I wished for it and I got it. Uh, how many KT stacks I end? Uh, let me look at something. Alright, let's say 30 or more, 29 or less. Something like that. Sure. Let's get into it, everybody. Welcome back into the Nexus Gaming Series Division B East. We have slow start, then taper off for the members. Or excuse me, for the blue side. 
They'll be having Zeno on Joanna, Zero to play uh, Urel, Arlu on the Anduin, Fenrir on the Orphea, and Real Big Dill to play the Genji. Over on the right-hand side, it is a Zul'jin Distillery. It is Dwit on the ETC, B Freesh will play a Sylvanas, Led on the Brightwing, Ankle Shot to play Kael'thas, and Cowboy Kyle on that Leoric. Yeehaw, partners! We got a gamble going on, and there you go. Start your gambles. How many stacks will Kael'thas have by the end of the game? It is Tomb of Spider Queen. Double Soaks are uh, pretty quick between lanes, so getting a lot of Regeneration Globes is... Plausible, but you just never know. You just never know because it could be a different play completely. We might have a double soak from Leork between top and mid and just bottom lane pressure throughout the game. This might not be a double soak play for Ankle Shot. Oh, and that will be a nice soothing mist from Brightwing. I thought for a second he'd just die immediately, but it's not going to be the case. All right, we got, we got some believers. Do we get some doubters for our prediction? That's really the big question is, what is going to be the laning setup? Okay, so Lyric does go into the bottom lane. It was feigned for a four-man in bottom. Cowboy Kyle going to be reach or running into the enemy team in that rotation back down. But I don't think much, if any, experience will be lost out in any of this. K uh, Kale Foss already on three stacks. He he's a tenth of the way! I don't think that math is right, but, you know. <laughs> oh, no, it is. Immediate doubt. Well, Leoric, you're out bottom lane. Zero Day gonna just getting just getting drained down here. And Leo actually seeming seemingly is, is pushing her in quickly, health bar wise and wave wise as well. Zebo stacking is a hell no. Kalethal stacking is a hell yeah. Oh, is that is that how that works? Okay. Yeah, I watched a couple streams of uh, here and there of like Lies of P over the last couple days and definitely, definitely looks good. Definitely looks like a game to be angry at. <laughs> but we do have Lords of the Fallen coming up, which I'm really, really excited about. It looks, it looks promising. Power slide in from ETC. As more globes are being picked up by him and Kael'thas, we have that prog rock level one for ETC. Orphea not done with her level one, but just maybe, just maybe in some massive team fight with a con condemn from Joanna, she could get that uh, triple hit. Actually, she could find it right here. Oh, no. Everyone was, like, kind of grouped up for it. Face shift from Brightwing, connecting into Sylvanas. Good gravity laps out from Kael'thas as well. Some deflect activated by Dill, and then Orphea gets a Shadow Waltz kill. Fenrir with these chomps trying to chase in further. Not going to be finding any extra damage, or, well, actually going to find some damage, but no extra kills. The siege in the mid lane will be had. Uh, we're looking at 12 in the bank, 22 in the pockets for the members of Slow Start. 39 in the pockets, none in the bank, or I guess none turned in from Zul'jin Distillery. A good power slide forces a leap of faith out from Fenrir, who is spreading... The living bomb to some allies. You know, just gotta keep everyone warm with that living bomb. Back over in bottom lane, zero day. Still just kinda clear the wave up against Leoric. Gonna bop him back as the Spectral, or the Drain Hope does not connect. Spectral Leech is a talent, and it just sounds like it is what the baseline should be. Great power slide onto two at max range. Polymorph onto the Genji. He is a crab. Johnna looking for those subdue stacks here and there, or at least the, the Quadra stack off the subdue. Not the easiest to get. Kael'thas currently seven on his regeneration globes as Leoric is pressuring onto zero day. Kyle will force Urel back out of the wave a little bit. Does she have well up and available? Yes, she does. Should get the tap onto that one as we go back into a bit of a scuffle towards the top lane port front gate. Kael'thas throws the living bomb onto Joanna. She doubled back. Zeno doesn't want to spread that fire. Okay. Turn and availability exists to the side of Zul'jin Distillery. Will they be able to get this? Power slide from ETC, forcing the Orphea. We're focusing on the Orphea. Xeno steps in to get some counter pressure. Ankle shot getting really low. Genji, does he have some shurikens? It was too greedy. Six HP, I think, is the lowest ankle shot goes. No kill onto the Kael'thas. Fenrir going to be met by a power slide. A chomp to be returned into the face of Sylvanas. The phase shift from Brightwing is good, but I think 
She's a little low on Monet this time. Pops the Soothing Mist as well. Cowboy Kyle begins more drainage onto Zero Day Attack, and the Righteous Hammer gets the bop into the wall as well. Body blocking from that. But both teams have enough for a turn-in. ETC trying to get the delay out here. Only 12 are necessary for a turn-in. On the side of slow start. I do believe Yorel's gonna get this. Yeah, Yorel, Joanna do get the last little bit of a turn in. And here come the big bad blue web weavers for the side of slow, start, then taper off. All right, the solo lane matchup right now, like Cowboy Kyle has been doing so good up against Yorel, just the constant drain hope, la like landing those as well. Have been really, really on point, just keeping this URL in check and keeping them low on HP. Of course, Dauntless, you know, level one, that's, that's, that's 35 physical armor, and URL has some good sustainability, but either way, these Drain Hopes are really pressuring on a Zero Day's full health bar. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Let's take a look into mid lane and see how the Siege is going to be had by the side of Slow Start. They're going to get the Fort Front Gate here. Top lane, Web Weaver is going to be cleared out, and it will get some damage onto the Fort Front Gate, but the mass. The mass of. Uh, uh, the mass. Mass majority? The vast majority. There we go. The vast majority of the siege through mid gets the fort front gate and some damage here on said structure. Cowboy Kyle, the soothing miss from Brightwing, and I can't believe it. Brightwing saves the moment. What's up, Last? Good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming through the stream. All right, now a turn in for the side of Zul'jin Distillery. They get into their 10 talents here. A split second earlier, ETC could have uh, power slid and got that Mosh, but that's eh, all good. And I, I assumed it was Mosh, and it's going to be a Mosh pickup. You have a Brightwing Blink Heal, Kael'thas with the Phoenix. And Tomb for Leoric, and what is Sylvanas going to go? Is she going to go fishing with a Mind Control, or are we just going Mass AoE Silence with the Wailing Arrow? Thanks for the second, Yanthor. Need to see with the power slide through, just kind of threatening. Ankle shot with the gravity lapse, trying to poke out as well. Gets a little bit of CC. Joanna stepping out. Does have that subdue level four, so as I said, she hits two or more enemy here. She gets that massive slow. You hit the four, then you get the completed quest. And you'll be able to get that massive slow anytime you're hitting an enemy here. But the mid lane web weaver looking very similar. The opposing side of Blush Shield, a Light Bomb, big condemn from Joanna. The Crushing Jaws will be coming through. Slow start, then taper off. Pick up a triple kill, and then it's quite a few gems to be lost on the side of Zul'jin Distillery as well. The top lane Webweaver, though, is going to confirm this fort. The wave is just too quick. There's not enough clear quick enough. I don't even think Asmodee and Dunk would have done anything. Well, maybe like a late game Asmodee and Dunk, but we're only seven, eight minutes in here. It would have been enough to splash onto the wave and get a few stacks for himself. But with the triple kill, that is going to be an available turn in to the side of Slow Start. On the side of Zul'jin Distillery, they're actually only two gems away from a turn in of their own. It's less than it's less than a wave. EDC gets a power slide through. It is a mind control Savannah. We could see her throw that out soon here. Oh no. Sylvanas actually having to use the haunting wave to get away. Kael'thas left on his own. He gets picked off. Yorel jumps in. Polymorphed. She is a crab. Face melt. Oh, that's a nice flesh shield. Condemn light bomb. Dropping the mosh. It's a huge mosh, but there's no damage, unfortunately. Genji goes down to the Sylvanas on the north side. Yorel immediately rushes over, and she gets, I think she got all the gems right there. I saw a bunch of plus fives. Wasn't paying attention to her total. But either way, a nice kill onto Brightwing, a trade into Genji. Hey, Celexia, what's up, bud? Good to see you today, my friend. I hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. Appreciate you coming through. Oh, Blue Web Weavers will descend to the side of Slow Start. Rel keeping the clear. Oh wait! Oh wait! Hold on! No. The way the way Zeno was was stepping in here, but there's no bless shield available. Light bomb is still five seconds away. 
ETC, does he have cooldown reduction on his 13? He hasn't taken it yet, so I don't know. Phoenix thrown out by the Kael'thas, and this is going to be a zoning tool currently. Actually, let's leave the talents up. Yorel pushes up mid-wave. That should be the fourth there. Huge Light Bomb, X-Strike, and Condemn. Things are looking good. The Bless Shield was used. Gravity left from Kael'thas. Connects into Genji. He tries to get some deflect damage back onto the enemies. Face Shift will be applied to Angle Shot to bolster the health of the Kael'thas. The mid lane four going to be tried. The Leo's going to try and save that, but I think the wave is just too massive. Absolutely, it's too massive. ETC face melt pushes back. The enemy, no encore cooldown at 13, and ETC will fall. The crushing jaws are out from Orpheus. Xenochrist spreads the living bomb to Anduin, but he's fine. That's going to be the face schmelt. Wow. Uh, the big question is no one freed Harrison Jones. How unfortunate. Oh, boy. How unfortunate. Oh, they're, uh, the last I saw, they were like 10 or so shy of turning. Yurel gets a wave in bottom, so they're probably closer and closer, ever so much closer. Yurel actually has the vast majority of the turn in still. And so they're at 50, 50, the 50 number, 50 and some gems. I'm gonna try and catch Leoric here. The Bless Shield, the Light Bomb combo to be used. Mind Control from Sylvanas, the Face Shift from Brightwing. She's gonna be teleported in. Doesn't get enough, doesn't get the activated heal from that. There's, there's a small window, but either way, Blink Heal's in place and Brightwing does not get picked off. Anduin throws back another Chastise. Three stacks on his Piercing Light. But with a kill and some gems picked up from the waves, this is enough for a turn in for the side of Slow Start. Leap of Faith midair. They spread the Living Bomb, but that's okay right now. Zero days not forced to use Arden Defender. Three gems are necessary for the turn, and who's got them? It's spread between two players. They need the turn in from Genji plus the Orphea or Anduin. But Zul'jin Distillery gets the turn in here. 16 talents here on the horizon for both. 25 regeneration globes on the Kael'thas. Believer's got to be feeling pretty good about this. There's still forts up and available. Ankle shot. Ankle shot. There was a globe you missed. Just just focusing solely on the on the Kael'thas regeneration globe stacking. Genji chasing in. Gravity laps to be thrown back. Entomb from Leoric activated as well. Anduin runs in with a with a light bomb. Oops, sorry about that. Iron Defender activated by the Urel and ETC Mosh Pit. Locks in Orphea, forces the Leap of Faith onto Joanna. Savannah still the one to fall. Zero Day with a massive Righteous Hammer. That's going to be a chomp from Orphea and a kill from Joanna. Structures are falling, but so are the health bars. Where are you going, Dill? I am sorry. What? Nicely done. Swift Strike reset and the map to be cleared out. And in all of that, Kael'thas still at 25 regeneration globes. Oh, massive wave in top, but it won't take down the keep. Bottom lane to be cleared out. All right. The big thing to note is going to be a web weaver turn in for the side of slow start. Maybe they want to push up their waves a little bit. They are going to grab a camp here. Boss is up and available. No one has even entered the boss pit at this time. Or in this game. Well, an easy camp to be grabbed for mid lane. As I said, only three gems are necessary, so just about anyone on the team, I think, can turn in. Yeah, anyone on the team can get this turn in right now. Unfortunately, Genji should fall. Oh, good deflect. X Drake was shifted into there. Yeah, that was a shift ER. <laughs> those abilities right next to each other and either way x strike was used it's on a slight cooldown still 45 seconds but there's no dead genji the web weavers are descending and mid lane is looking still fairly good zero day doesn't have ardent defender for 20 seconds that will be a leap of faith forced up by the end when he has got the glyph and i don't know what his cooldowns are looking like just yet 
We'll take a look at those soon. Orphea finishes. Oh, she finished level seven, but it doesn't matter. Genji will be traded for a Brightwing ETC. The Blessed Hammer's chasing in. Joanna gets a good condemn. The slow's in place, and Sylvanas will fall. Ankle shot gonna be fine. Gonna be absolutely fine. Just looking really quickly. One leap of faith charge is off cooldown. It looks like another's about 50%. Living Bomb to zone back Zero Day, who just plays the upper portion of this lane. More Living Bombs just being thrown up by Kael'thas. This top lane wa Webweaver wave is looking really promising. 28 regeneration globes for the Kael'thas currently. Throws out a Phoenix. Angle shot, the face shift from Brightwing. It doesn't come through in time. Oh, the longest two seconds of their entire life right there. And that is... Top lane keep going down. Bottom lane keep front gate is going to be rapidly reduced to nothing. But will this Webweaver take out the entire keep? Well, the Webweaver phase is about to end, which is the big part. And that'll mean boss is back up and available. And they're in a, going for... Uh, the members of Slow Starter are going for an immediate boss. And they'll have their 20 talents here with all this trickle-in experience as well. Oh, blinded by the light, censure. We have the engulfing oblivion. Living Weapon and Seraphim. Is this a push to win? That is the big question, chat. A level and some change advantage, a talent tier advantage. Yeah, looks like this is a push to win. Camp for mid lane to be grabbed, but I do believe Zuldan still knows this is, this is coming their way. Yeah, especially with the entire enemy team showing in a minion wave. They can see this by the sidewall as well. The enemy is attacking. Someone using, that sounds like the Volskaya announcer. Or is it just the general Overwatch announcer? I'm not sure. Either way. Blush Shield will go wide from the Joanna. Righteous Hammer bopping ETC around. The Light Bomb does not get the connection they're looking for. Of course, shielding is dropping. Moshpit from ETC on the side of the Entomb. Zero Day steps in with a Righteous Hammer and a self-cast Seraphim to be able to get the interrupt onto the Mosh Pit. Boss is still wailing onto this core right now, and it looks like slow start. Then taper off. They get the kill into Sylvanas, and they will take down this core. GG, well played. Our first best of three of the day. Goes over the side of slow start, then taper off in a 2-1 delivery. You can tell because if they win now, I lose the bet. <laughs> good game, good series, good time. And we are going to have more, more games for you today. We're going to have more games casted, so this is not the only game. Uh, Kael'thas had 29 or less. 29 or less. You get 28.